me, Charlie Pyatt here. In the last episode, I went through the automation system I set up to create a custom VR gasket from the 3D scan of my face. The next big step is to integrate the gasket into the CAD model I have of the headset itself. I also need to spend some time finalizing all the details on the VR enclosure and really figure out how all the things are going to work and be assembled. This will include getting all the screws and threaded inserts into the model to hold everything together. I'll also be finishing the integrated headphones and tightening mechanism on the back of the headset. Hopefully by the end of this episode I will have most of the CAD work done so I can start getting into prototype testing of the finalized parts. Still a lot of work to do so let's get on through it. So if you remember way back to episode 2, I had the basic form of the VR enclosure done and output some renderings. At this point I need to pick up from there and continue on with finalizing the CAD work. This is always kind of a deceptive stage of the design process. It looks like things are pretty close to being done, but I still need to do all the real details. Things like figuring out how the enclosure opens and closes, and where all the hardware and screws are going. I also need to work through how all the ports and buttons are going to be interacted with going into the Oculus hardware through the enclosure itself. All these details are really where the bulk of the engineering time and effort are going to go on this whole project. For most of the hardware fixtures, I'm going to use threaded inserts and machine screws. The print material I'm using will work well with heat press threaded inserts that I can just embed in all the parts after everything is printed. I'm adding similar mounting points for all the forward facing camera surround parts and again for affixing the carbon fiber front panels to the enclosure itself. At this point I switched over to the internal mounting bracket for the forward facing cameras. This bracket will connect to the removable front portion of the enclosure. This will allow me to quickly remove the front cover and make adjustments to the camera without taking out the main Oculus internals. Because the Oculus will have so many button and interaction points passing through the sidewall of the enclosure, I don't want to have to remove it unless I really have to once it's all been installed. If you remember back to the previous episodes, I've talked about how important it is to come up with design rules to follow to keep the look of the product coherent. As I worked through the enclosure, I slowly came up with a concept of having visible hex screws on the carbon fiber components only. In general, with modern product design, you never have visible screw heads or other fixtures. To play against this normal, I wanted to have visible screws on the flat planes created by the carbon fiber sheet stock. The idea is to have the bulk of the headset with clean, refined forms, then have portions that look like they were kind of chopped off and revealing the functional complexity of the screw heads. This should give the whole headset a kind of mixed retro appearance with exposed parts showing the screw heads like you would find on products back from the 80s, but with other clearly defined portions of the product having modern clean formwork. Many of the moves I'm doing on the interior mounting look more complicated than they need to be, but this is because I'm sticking with these design rules going forward. I'm now working with getting the Oculus ports and buttons passed through the enclosure walls so I can interact with them once this is all closed up. I'm following a similar strategy with the camera surrounds where I'm making unique parts for each of these points. This will allow me to update and make tweaks to those areas if there's an alignment or functional issue. This will increase the total part count a bunch, but because this is a one-off it's really not that big of a deal. Some of these electronic components, like the volume and power buttons, will attach to custom rocker switches. I'm basically just using the flex allowed by the printed material to work as a movable button instead of making the individual button parts. If I started to separate those buttons out into their own little individual parts, the number of components would go from out of control to much worse. What I'm doing is actually a common move in injection molded parts to save costs too. You can just cut a long U-shape out of the enclosure wall and allow the flex of the material to press into the internal momentary switch instead of making and assembling individual buttons. You can see I also made some stacked USB ports on the front section. This will pass my hand tracking module and forward facing cameras out of the enclosure. I just have panel mounted USB cables that I will mount into the interior to make this all work. This will allow me to run everything tethered with three USB cables going off the unit or untethered with the forward facing cameras disabled. It should just revert back to a regular Oculus if I unplug everything. Now I have all my ports and mounts done, but I still have to add the screws to the unit. I'm downloading all my 3D CAD parts from McMaster Car and importing them into my model as separate parts. McMaster is probably one of the best resources out there for making mechanical stuff. They have an insane amount of hardware, and most of it has complete 3D models that are easily accessible. 
This is always one of the more boring parts of making an assembly like this. I usually just turn a movie on in the background and grind through it for a couple hours. You can see how nuts my assembly starts to get as I keep adding more and more of the fasteners in there. Again, I can mirror most of these over, so I should only have to do half the work here. This may seem like a waste of time to do, but I will get two really important things out of doing this. First, I can tell that all my internal clearances are okay. It's amazing how you can think everything is good in a model, then you find that a screw head sticks out and makes it so you can't install a PCB or something. By having all the hardware in the CAD, I can see that everything will fit correctly. Second important thing is that I can generate an accurate bill of materials or bomb for the whole assembly. That way I can tell how many packs of screws and inserts and all that I will need for the final order. Alright, so that pretty much wraps up the main enclosure. The next thing I'm going to get into is the design and integration of the headphones. For this I'm basically using the audio outputs coming off the Oculus and just running those wires right into my own open ear headphone design. I decided that I would build up the headphone body by stacking 2mm carbon fiber sheet stock. But yeah, on the CAD side I'm just coming up with a flat sketch and then going to revolve it around. There will be a 3D printed part that will have threaded inserts that will capture it all together. I found some old Sony headphones that I will use the driver from, as well as the muffs, so I won't have to source those parts beyond that. You can see I do my revolve here and pretty much have my finished stacked headphones. I just add the through holes into the 3D printed part to secure everything back together. I was going to do these connection parts in sheet stock as well. The end pins would be 3D printed and allow the headphones to pivot. I really ended up not liking the way this was coming together at the end though. It just kind of looked chunky no matter how I adjusted it. I decided to leave that for a little bit and go back to making the venting in the headphone body to make these open ears. All the carbon fiber will be machined, so I have to make sure my pattern works with a 1 8 inch tool. This is a little clunky for what I'm trying to do, but it should be okay. I ended up with an internal radial pattern and an exterior horizontal one that has a pretty good look to it. With that done, I went back to the headphone connectors and just decided to ditch the concept I had been working on. It was getting worse the more I developed it out, which usually means it's just not the right direction to be going in. Instead I decided to go with some kind of standoff rod concept. This would include two posts coming off the headphones at a fixed angle with no adjustment. I could make the receiver for those parts on the mass side have some wrapping form that would connect everything. By adding coiled material here, I'm making it so the headphones can bend and deflect more. Sort of like some kind of helical leaf spring or something. This will keep the headphones from needing a normal pivot to adjust to my head. Well, I thought about that situation. I imported the scan data from the mass generation I did in the last episode. This will allow me to make sure the headphones are coming in line with my ears and that the clearances are all good. I did some more fixture integration as well. I came back to the headphone mount situation that I'm having trouble with, and I still like the concept I had, just not the form that was coming out of it. I decided to try and roll those connections from the outside instead of the inside, which would add even more deflection to the mounts. Fusion 360 did not like making this design, but it started to look better, which is a good sign. After mirroring it, it's like it has a much more interesting look. Kind of opens it up and keeps it from looking so cramped together, which is great. So with that concept developed out, I think I'm looking good on the headphone side. I can start moving on to the rest of the design. You can see I have the back roughed out. I modified a version of the lattice generator for the custom face gasket I showed in the last episode to make the back padding. This will be a universal part, so I don't need to create an automated generator for it or do anything fancy like that. On the mechanical side, I'm using a worm gear system to pull in paracord straps that will hold the unit on the head. For now, I'm going to keep it as is. I've already done the engineering on it, and I want to make it just to see how it comes out and works at this point. And there's no real electronics passing to the back or anything, so I can always upgrade this design later on. Going back to the front of the main enclosure, you can see I've made some changes here too. I was thinking the overall ventilation and heat management in this guy wouldn't be great, so I wanted to add some perforations to that front plate for better airflow. I tried some different hole patterns and wasn't really liking the look of them, but then I remembered the wheels on the Mars Curiosity rover. The wheels on the Curiosity have this Morse code message cut into the tread so that as it rolls along it leaves this message in the Martian sand behind it. Such a satisfying mental image too. There's this thing humanity made out there on another planet rolling along and leaving this endless message in its wake. I figured that'd be a fun concept to duplicate on the ventilation here so I made a grasshopper script that would cut out those holes for a line of input text. I really like the Morse code look here. It gives a direction and movement to what would otherwise be just a boring hole pattern. With those final updates done, I think I'm good to go. I'm going to save this out as an FBX file and then import it into Blender for a rendering pass. This should give me a better look at how everything is fitting together. 
Right, so now I have all the imported parts and materials applied. You can see with the addition of the fixtures and connection parts, this all starts to look more like a complete design. So I wanted to check that front assembly removal out first. This will be how I access those cameras that I talked about at the beginning of the episode. You can see the Oculus stays fixed in the main enclosure and the forward facing cameras and hand tracking modules can be removed for maintenance. The range of motion of the headphones is looking solid as well. These can lock kind of up and forward when they are not in use, which is a pretty fun design feature. The end of that short arm should snap into the pink open circle and keep it locked in place. You can see all the components exploded out here, which gets kind of crazy, but I think I have everything accounted for. This includes all the threaded inserts and various screws I need to order, as well as the off-the-shelf components. This also shows the custom face gasket and all the 3D printed parts, along with the machine carbon fiber parts. Again, a lot of stuff going on here, but it looks like it's coming together. Okay, so that should get me out of the finalized mechanical design phase. Super exciting to see all these details starting to get into place. This project started off as a bunch of pretty rough and disjointed separate concepts. There is the Oculus headset, forward facing cameras, and hand tracking module plus the idea of the custom face gasket and novel tightening solution for the strap system. These were all fun ideas, but they weren't really coherently connected together in any way. But at this point, things are really starting to feel unified together. All those loose concepts are packaged up and playing off each other visually and functionally. Next episode, I'm gonna print out a test run of these parts and do some dry fitting to see if all my off-the-shelf components are fitting together right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.